Welcome to the Hookup on Music with your genre jumping host, Tony. Me, Tony. How's it going out there, everybody? It's very awesome to be here tonight at our 77th episode where we're going to present to you a lot of awesome different tunes in a lot of different ways, like we always do. Got a lot of cool stuff on the docket to get started um, on this on this wonderful, wonderful July uh, weekday is uh, some new releases, uh, or a new release here today. We're going to cover a little bit of a band called Beach Bunny. Just came across our radar, okay? American rock band formed in 2015 um, in Chicago, Illinois. It was uh, initially a solo project by guitarist and vocalist Lily Trifilio, um, but became a full band in 2017 um, with uh, two other members, John Alvarado on drums and Anthony Vaccaro, uh, on bass guitar, uh, also playing lead guitar um, in the present, but just a, a band that, that that came across my radar with a little bit of a live performance that was just was just thrown on my lap. Some really awesome guitar interplay right there. Uh, really good for a sound, and honestly, the name of Beach Bunny. Could not be any more well received for a, an amazing summer summer day, but uh, really uh, digging deeper, they they have two albums. Um, first album, Honeymoon, um, came out in 2020, and Emotional Creature came out in 2022. Um, but again, um, in 2024, they released the song Vertigo, which is honestly another one that was dropped on my lap, and honestly, a very 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 um, cool song. A chance to check it out. Um, their first uh, new music in almost two years. Um, following the, uh, they they had a band member, uh, Matt Hinkles, who played lead guitar, and he unfortunately left, and that's that's why Mr. Anthony Vaccara moved from bass to uh, lead guitar. Um, and now they got a touring bassist to uh, take the place of of that bass player. So the picture that you are currently seeing on the screen is when they were a four piece now they are down to a three piece which is always really um interesting when a band changes dynamics like that and it takes two years to come out with an album so i'm going to be very curious to hear more of this when it comes out and i'm sure it's going to be equally as good as those first two albums that we're just we're just we're just definitely uh digging into uh these albums and they're on a label called mom and pop uh, a little bit of an independent label uh, founded by Michael Gladstone. Um, not quite independent because Alicia Keys is on there, um, Tom Morello, Camp, uh, Courtney Barnett, but uh, a nice, interesting roster of artists that are <clears throat> to see uh, Beach Bunny be a part of that is, is just really cool and um, was glad that they got dropped on our lap because, again, where are you going to find Beach Bunny? You know, I mean, I'm not looking for a band called beach bunny and i and honestly i'm glad because when you're outside and you're in the back and you're grilling they're a nice grilling band i'll call them a grilling band a nice band to, to sit back and chill with your friends but uh check those guys out beach bunny definitely really uh maybe worth your time you might like them uh quite a bit uh, last week we covered, uh, well, last couple weeks we covered the Kings, we covered BB King, and we covered uh, the one and only uh, Albert King, and of course Freddie King, who after covering this heard an awesome track of his on uh, XRT. So uh, the Kings have been flowing around, but uh, where do we go from there? You know, so I decided let's let's, let's talk another uh, guitarist great, uh, one Otis Rush. You ever hear of him? You should have, because he's amazing. <laughs> Can't quit you, baby. Baby, I gotta put you down. Born in uh, 1934 on April 29th in Philadelphia, uh, Mississippi, which is crazy because when doing research for this, I'm thinking, wow, a blues guy from uh, Philadelphia? No, not that Philadelphia tone. Um, the Philadelphia, Mississippi. We're back in the Mississippi. Okay. Um, just a really, 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 honestly, a distinct guitar style, which is what we love here. Uh, every artist that we talk about has a lot of uh, distinct style, no matter what the genre is or who you happen to uh, enjoy or like or anything like that. So, again, um, 
his sound became known kind of as the West Side Chicago Blues, a very influential to uh, everyone from Michael Bloomfield to Peter Green. Um, very, 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 very awesome sound that just really, really carries carries throughout the guitar, carries throughout his sound and throughout the, the what he is what he is filled with, and that is also a tenor voice. If you heard on that track right there, just you, it, 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 oh, man, really. Uh, radiates through the speakers um been digging really deep back into his catalog recently um morning in the morning um i like that morning in the morning is uh album from 1969 um is what we've been spinning down here co-produced by as just stated mike bloomfield a really awesome guitar player who we might have mentioned once or twice on here but uh tracks like me and baby i love you and working man feel so bad and it takes time and can't wait no longer um, definitely make this for just a really great listen. And, um, you know, Otis Rush is up there with all those other great guitar players um, that we have talked about. You know, he was one of seven children and uh, worked on a farm throughout his childhood. So you could hear some of that through his playing. Okay. He did also, like some of our other artists, move to Chicago, Illinois in, the, in 48 and in the 49, somewhere around that area. Um, there is... That's what's crazy about these. Uh, the, the, I, I always think about that when they put dates down. Like somebody's actually standing there and goes, this is the day, exactly this time. This is exactly when, um, which is kind of cool about the blues. Um, but made his name playing the clubs on the south and west side. Um, he had a, uh, he had, I like this name of his uh, group. I was Little Otis was the name of his group. And um, his first single, I Can't Quit You, Babe, which was a little bit uh, just just a, just just a barn burner. Um, some other good tracks around this time he was recording was Double Trouble. Um, but again, in 71, Right Place, Wrong Time, another awesome, awesome album. And if you get a chance, check out the front cover. His hair is just rocking in this in, in this front cover. And it's just just really, really, really um Again, an album just just filled with guitar, tore up, rainy night in Georgia. I wonder why. Take a look behind. Just really, 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 again, good stuff to really get down and enjoy the blues. Always good to hear a little bit of the one and only um, Otis Rush, which is, well, why we're here. <laughs> Guitar, 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 man. Just a lot of guitar. Love that guitar. Um, in the 80s, touring, touring, touring machine. Um, very cool. Um, you know, compared uh, in one thing was a little bit of a comparison to a little bit of a BB King, um, but a little less predictable, um, which take that as what you will. I was a little shocked that uh, he was also a good singer with a good instrument was another a uh, great description. Um, but again, on a Rolling Stones guitar list, um, not that those matter uh, a lot. Uh, sadly, um, he lived, uh, you know, 84, lived a full life, lived a life just filled with guitar and just filled with playing and just, just, just filled, just filled with, with, with awesomeness. And that's, what's cool is you go back and you, you look deeper into a story and you, you, you could feel it, you know, feeling that working on the farms and stuff like that and listening to that, um, you know, him going to Europe in the sixties, um, played in the American folk blues festival, which was very, very cool at the time. Um, he did some recordings with little Walter, um, which if you're not familiar with who little Walter is again, another great blues artist who passed away in 68, way too young, but, uh, being able to, um, being able to compare it, uh, little Walter was compared to Django Reinhardt, Charlie Parker, Jimi Hendrix. Great. Um, if you have not, um, just, just please dig into some little Walter too. Um, he's buried in Evergreen Park, Illinois, not too far away from where we're situated. Uh, little Walter is, but again, Otis Rush, little Walter. You can you really dig any um, um, cooler into artists than these 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 great artists in which we're talking about? Um, really, really just awesome, awesome guitar players. Um, another really awesome band that we've been digging into a lot is the Gap Band. Um, 
came together in 1967 and were together all the way to 2010. A uh, pair of three brothers, Charlie Wilson, Ronnie Wilson, and Robert Wilson. Just, man, uh, Robert playing the bass, Ronnie on vocals, piano, synthesizer, trumpet, plugger, Charlie Wilson, lead vocals, synthesizer, clavinet, organs. He did all the drums on these albums. Um, really cool, really awesome. Feeling down, feeling bad. Um, they got you covered on a, a sound that's definitely going to leave you feeling what I would say is amazing. Always wake up early in the morning. But uh, the early years, though, formed in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Got Tulsa, Oklahoma, man. 1967, based around the three Wilson brothers. Um, but they often included other um, artists with them as well. Um, did not know this uh, until I started listening to the Gap Band, but they backed up fellow Oklahoman um, Leon, uh, Leon Russell who we love here at the hookup on uh, music, the great Leon Russell, who is just filled with a 60 year career, who's just played with so many artists from Elton John to Joe Cocker, but uh, back to the great gap band. So yeah, they did a little bit of time with him and then they, they went on. Okay. They went on and they said, you know what? We're going to, we're going to get funky. So they start to get funky and, in the late 70s, start to develop what I would deem to be a really, really awesome, awesome uh, funk sound. Um, they were found by producer, producer Lonnie Simmons. And on the first album they worked with them, um, the Gap Band just called, came out February 26th of 79. A lot of good tracks on their Shake. Uh, if it's been a while since you listened to that one, Baby Baba Boogie. I like saying that a lot. real quickly. Baby Baba Boogie, a really, really great album. Um, Gap Band 2. Um, Gets better, gets better, gets better. Stepping out. Um, I don't believe you want to get up and dance. Oops. An eight minute and 39 seconds track that honestly, for, cue that up. Wherever you're at, cue that up. It's going to make you feel awesome. Just like watching these awesome outfits that they wear. The Gap Band were known to be some really cool dressers, I think, for the time. Um, Charlie, uh, really, 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 really awesome vocals on these albums, too. By the time Gap Band 3 comes along, um, we are really, really uh, cooking here, okay? We got Humpin', we got Burn Rubber, Why You Want to Hurt Me, if you haven't heard that one. Um, these songs are great. Uh, if you're, again, going through anything of hardship and you're looking for something to just make you smile, make you kick back, make you enjoy what you're doing, um, which is exactly uh, what I always do when I'm listening to the Gap Band. It's good for cutting lawn, too. I'm out there cutting the lawn, you know, you're busting a groove, you're dancing, listen to that Gap Band. Um, but Gap Band 4, now this is really, really, really where we get going. The track we played here a little while ago, early in the morning, uh, number one uh, single, you Dropped a Bomb on Me, great, great song, outstanding. This is the song that I've been queuing up lately. Um, there's a really, really good album if you would like to dig into a compilation. Um, it's their tracks, but it's longer versions of them. Um, check this album out. It's a really, really good, 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 good uh, digging deep. Um, but back to Outstanding, um, just a really awesome, good piano that makes me want to, um, you know, you know, this Platinum Selling Gap Band 4, it would just had it all over it, okay? The extended version of, of Outstanding or a lot of these songs um are where it's at okay you like jam bands there's jam funk bands you're like what's a jam funk band band that digs a little bit deeper into the funk when they are jamming and uh definitely gap band had no problem doing that um gap band five jamming another great great album with a track called party train where we're going to kind of wrap up the gap band speak right here by just saying that man at my wedding a really great uh, rendition of Party Train was led throughout the procession. And boy, I said procession like it was like it was a funeral. I don't know if that's what you call a, a reception, not a procession. A reception, a reception, not a precession. Your weddings are not precessions, they're receptions. But again, really, really great uh, Party Train, um, just really cooking right there. Um, but these guys... You know what I mean? Um, that's what's sad is uh, just thinking to their what 
that they were around and they uh, unfortunately were, were still here, um, would we be getting more of an output? Is there, you know, 2010 was a, a little bit before we really started getting into a little bit of uh, a nostalgia, okay? Um, Robert, unfortunately, in 2010 passed away of a heart attack at 53, which is kind of young. And Ronnie in 2021 at 73 of a stroke. Um, but if you do have an opportunity, um, you can see Charlie Wilson. He does sometimes perform, um, does really, really, really awesome um, for 71 years old. Please, uh, Charlie, uh, tour some more so we can uh, go out and see you. So it's it's always, you know. A band like the Gap Band, uh, guys like Otis Rush, these are exactly more of 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 of, of, a, of a scope, okay? A scope of just deep, 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 deep um, awesomeness, um, you know. Just just like uh, Iron and Wine, you know. You may be saying, "Who is Iron and Wine?" Um, I have uh, never really listened to them, um, but. Uh, a band that is just, 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 just really digging uh, their vibes to a uh, seven, seven studio albums um, they have uh, released. But we're going to go back to where I kind of got my, got my beginnings into them, and that is uh, our endless numbers, um, our endless number, our endless number days is the name of this um, album. And again, you may be into some of these songs. You may have heard them. Um, they might have creep up in um, everything from House. You know, some of these songs were in House, if you're a fan of that show. But again, um, On Your Wings gets started with a really, really cool, kind of a, a universal sound. Um, just Sam Beam um, is 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 Iron and Wine. It's another one of those where it's like Nine Inch Nails is Trent Reznor. Ooh, Atticus Ross is currently with too. I don't know if you'd appreciate it. He's a part of the band too, but usually it's uh, Iron and Wine is, is one guy, but this is the moniker in which he uses. But this album, Our, Our Endless Number Days, um, really, really good for the time. Naked As We Came is just a really, really great album. Each Coming Night, Free Until We Cut Out the Dawn. Um, just played a show um, in Chicago, which is um, kind of cool. You say to yourself, did did you get to get the out to that show? You might have. You might not have. Um, I do know some people who follow this uh, did get out. July 8th was that show, um, which was um, Monday night. A Monday night show, which is crazy. And they, uh, they, uh, <laughs> what's, what's crazy is uh, they uh, started with On Your Wings, which is exactly what you want to uh, be starting a concert with. Which is, I'm just blown away by the fact that uh, that that I said that and that they're playing um, just just touring. You know, they're touring and they're doing and they're doing their stuff, which is which is what we want to say. So if you were out there and you saw the show, please uh, share with us what you uh, thought of it because uh, our endless number of days was very important back in in in, in those in those. Uh, I'd say early 2000 uh, time period uh, for myself and growing musically. Um, if you haven't heard it, uh, dig into it and let us know what you think. Uh, also, we've been digging into trying to, again, uh, look back to some albums that we used to dig really, really, really uh, into and dig a lot into. And uh, one of them happens to be Mob Deep, okay? A little album that came out in 95, April 25th, okay? Uh, uh, familiar with this album? I'm not sure if you are, but if you aren't, this is their second studio album. Um, this was uh, definitely, definitely, definitely uh, had some good guest appearances. Nas, Raekwon, Ghostface Killer, Q-Tip. But you may be saying to yourself, again, who is uh, Havoc, Prodigy, The Abstract, Big Noid, uh, Raekwon? You know, he pretty does a little bit on it, too. Um, Big Noid, though, uh, definitely, definitely, definitely is a uh, close affiliation with Mob Deep has always been a great prodigy. Wow, uh, definitely uh, awesome. And him and Havoc are pretty much Mob Deep, okay? And sadly, Prodigy passed away back in 2017. Uh, we lost them, but again, him. But again, just a really, really, really great album. Um, stated as possibly one of the greatest hip-hop albums of all the time. Um, you know, 
every song feels like it's a different a different cut a different slice of a, an experience in which havoc and prodigy um lived in their queensboro uh where they happen to stay um a lot of people, well, one description by one person who uh, listened to the album is Havoc's love of his hometown hits you in the head like a Mike Tyson punch. Um, it's been a long time since you dig into the infamous. Uh, go back, and uh, I think it's time you do that. Um, getting started with the start of your ending, just, just just great, great, great track. Track four, Eye for an Eye. That's with Nas and Raekwon. Um, good to hear everybody. Uh, mixing up their uh, verses on your beef is mines my one of my favorites is uh it's only 50 seconds but the grave prelude before cradle to the grave um great stuff um great stuff and it's it's not to be um ignored really um just again another band whose con contribution to um music is just it's it's huge um and and to go back especially when somebody uh passes away um we and it's and like i stated it's been a little while you know i know we've done our honoring since he's passed away but never too late to honor a little bit more um never too late to to go back and dig and dig deep um you know a lot consider this uh you know prodigy said uh his first sampler uh, we had was an eps 16 plus we had that for a little while, and when the MPC came out, we bought that. And that was it, a little record player, a little mixer, and that's all we needed. Um, it's crazy how really simple the things that you may need to accomplish, just some really, really good recordings. And uh, they uh, they definitely, definitely, definitely um, accomplish some really, really good recordings. Um, Going to get into a band here that uh, you might not be too familiar with. You may be familiar with because of their covers that Metallica did. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Budgie. Here is their uh, song that I always like the title of that Metallica did a cover of. And that's a Crash Course Crash Course in Brain Surgery. <laughs> really cool. Uh <clears throat> Really cool high vocals there. Um, 67 to 88 was their original uh, original run. Um, they did some shows from 99 to 2010, uh, 95, 96. But <clears throat> originally, this is when um, they were around, and this is when they were just uh, originally rocking. Another three-piece, Tony Borge on guitar, Burke Shelley on uh, bass and vocals and Mellotron, and Ray Phillips on um, drums and percussion. Um, second album, Squawk. Love that name. Um, Burke Shelley's vocals and bass playing, um, definitely a precursor to, to metal. Okay. You heard that song right there. If it's, uh, if you don't call, so I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, you know, um, I know. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. Some people go, oh, it's not heavy metal. It's not Slayer. Yes. But, uh, <clears throat> the homicidal, uh, suicidal have been covered by Seattle grunge band Soundgarden. So it's cool that uh, bands like Metallica and Soundgarden are out there covering uh, just such a such an awesome band like uh, Budgie. Because uh, honestly, if a band like Metallica hadn't, you know, they were brought to my attention a long time ago. Um, definitely uh, cool is that there's some uh, really even in that song, like you could bob your head to it. So maybe it's some of your early early uh metal that you could bang your head i mean sabbath is slow and sludgy sludgy but some budgy uh bread fan a little bit faster for that uh, early 70s and uh, their album covers are really really cool um if you have not um got the chance to uh go ahead and check out some of those album covers in which they uh were a part of they definitely 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 um awesome awesome album covers but uh back to the band though um just really a, a, a sound and uh again a welsh band <clears throat> a welsh band that uh you don't come across uh too many uh welsh bands um right off the top of my head that i could just be like this is a welsh band this is a welsh band um but uh what i do know about the band is that they just really 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 rock um didn't get there i would uh <clears throat> say their just claim 
um, when they first came out. But as they, uh, you know, being able to uh, have Metallica kind of say, hey, you know what? You uh, you do some pretty good stuff here. This is this is this is good. Um, definitely leaves you to say, hey, you know, we're gonna dig a little bit more into uh, Budgie because uh, Budgie is just well, that's what Budgie is. Is Budgie's Budgie, and uh, dig a little bit more into Budgie. Uh, one of our favorite albums, um, an album that tonight um, we're gonna really, really, really look deep into, and that's uh, Anthrax's "Sound of White Noise," um, an album that came out at a time period where, man, I just really, really liked heavy music. And this album just really spoke to me um, in, in a lot of different ways. Um, I like the vocals. I like the guitars. I like the drums. I just liked so much about it. But what I didn't know is when the album came out, just how uh, different uh, the changes that were going through the band. You know, longtime frontman Joey Belladonna was being replaced by John Bush. Um as a fan, you don't really realize uh, just kind of how uh, sad and how uh, maybe in the background this seems to be something that's big and huge and uh, could be a little bit uh, disappointing um, for a lot of fans who happen to just be around all the time and want to hear what this band's doing with Joey Belladonna. So to hear such a change, um, but, you know, Let's let's dig into it, okay? Because this was the last studio album of Dan Spitz. Um, and um, before we go into this album a little bit, we're going to say that uh, the producer was known for uh, producing albums like Alice in Chains and Jane's Addiction. And um, they were also kind of starting to maybe and take some of those influences that were happening in the early 90s and kind of say work these in a little bit we're going to uh, maybe use some of these as a uh like a post to say hey you know um this is a kind of a guiding post of what we're going to do um for this album but uh the rest of the band seem to be um uh what do you call that seem to be on board with it which is i always say when a band's on board with uh something you know they wanted to move away from the rapid fire thrash metal which is crazy because currently right now the rapid fire thrash metal is back and they are just really 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 uh encompassing that old sound again so the sound of white noise era this uh john bush era of the band is kind of been put kind of on a back um what do you call that uh back burner Okay, the album before this album, Persistence of Time, kind of saw the band moving away from their, they had a lot of humor in their old music. I'm the man, um, bring the noise, just, just a lot of fun, a lot of humor. So they wanted to be a little bit more serious and wanted to show uh, a, an earnest tone, I guess you could say. Which I don't know what that says about Dan Spitz. He didn't like the the more earnest tone because he kind of takes off after the uh, album. Um, but again... Um, you're, 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 this is a band that, uh, you know, you're willing to give a chance for, okay. You're willing to say, Hey, um, how is this, uh, going to be, but the album, um, before we dig into it, when it comes out 62,000 copies in its first week, it was, uh, it's high. It's ever, uh, um, chart position at number seven on the billport 200 chart. So anthrax is on the charts. I don't know if that was uh, the goal, but it sold 40,000 more in its second week, uh, certified gold in 1993. Um, by 2002, over a uh, half a million copies were sold in the U.S. Um, the singles uh, were great, but tr starting off with Potter's Field, uh, just really, really great, really heavy with that television static, um, which gets in your head. Um, only just a really awesome first single and honestly james hetfield uh from metallica called it a, a perfect a perfect song um they still sometimes with joey belladonna will play this song live which give props to joey belladonna that he's not going to say oh i'm not going to play this song this song is not something that uh is for me or something that i'm interested in 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 playing or uh being a part of on uh this album but again he says, you know what, I'm going to uh, let it ride. 
and I'm going to play, uh, you know, sing this song because honestly, it's a really, good, it's a really good song. Room for one more, um, only room for one more. Um, High Pro Glow, which is track five. Package Rebellion in between that is a really, really awesome six minute, eighteen minutes track. But High Pro Glow only room for one more blew up Headbangers Ball. If you uh, back then or now, go on YouTube. Check these music videos out. Uh, they are heavy. Um, I really like the sound um, that they were putting out. Invincible, great, another great six-minute track. I like this album for its huge six-minute tracks. Anthrax weren't putting out super long songs before this, but they decided to say, hey, you know what? Let's uh, dig, let's dig, let's dig, let's get a little bit longer. And a uh, thousand points of hate awesome black lodge probably my favorite uh track on the album what i like about the song is it's it's vibe um it's definitely sounds different than anything else they do uh some people describe anthrax as cooled down take a listen you uh be the judge and see if it's uh anthrax cooled down but um it being said it's still anthrax and it still rocks um just Honestly, the music video is really cool for it too. If you uh, get a, get a, a chance, check that that out. Uh, but then the last three tracks: uh, C11, H17, N2, O2, S, N, A. Really awesome four minute, twenty four minute track uh, song. Burst, great song, and the ending. Love this last track. This is not an exit. Another six minute, forty nine second burner. Uh, Fifty six minutes. Um, some really cool uh, bonus tracks if you happen to uh, dig into that. Uh, a Smiths cover, Anthrax doing the Smiths, London. Uh, then Lizzie cover doing Cowboy Song. Um, off Wiedershin, uh, cheap, cheap Trick. Really great, 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 great. Uh, that's on the 2001 remaster, those are. And on the Japanese edition, um, looking down the barrel of a gun cover, which if you're not uh, familiar, um, uh, shows up later on on a soundtrack that uh, really, again, great, 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 great song. Of course, the Beastie Boys did it. Just awesome, 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 awesomeness. But, uh, you know, I think an all-around great album. Okay, I think uh, John Bush did an awesome job. Dan Spitz and Scott Ian are, are holding up the lead guitar and rhythm guitar, respectively, with some great backing vocals. Frank Bellow, great bass player, along with his uncle, Charlie Benante. Really, 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 really awesome. Really, really, really great. Um, just the grid album. Please take your time. Uh, go check that album out. Uh, spin it as much as you can. Um, as much as I have. Um, spin their ones after this, too. Stomp 442. Um, I know if you are a fan of one Dimebag Daryl, he appears, uh, well, he appears on a couple tracks on the King Size and Riding Shotgun um, on that album. And then after that, Volume 8, um, The Threat is Real. Got to see that on the second stage on uh, just recently. Uh, did a little bit of a, we went over a, a venue, a concert venue. Um, saw them there at that concert venue. Check out that video about the New World Music Theater. Um Credit One, whatever they're calling it these days. Check out that video. A lot of cool live uh, footage there. But uh, getting back to Anthrax, no matter where you stand, new Anthrax, old Anthrax, um, definitely you want to be uh, Anthrax to be a part of your uh, catalog of, of, of awesome. And uh, Anthrax is a part of our catalog of awesome, which is, which is great. You know what I'm saying? It's great to uh, really kind of... Uh, just kind of see what's going on. You know, recently um, I was looking through maybe some concerts that I did not get to uh, get to get to attend. Okay. And one that really is really getting under my craw that I did not get to attend was uh, was uh, the Ravinia. I have not been out to the Ravinia yet this year. And uh, just some of the bands that have been out there. Uh, Daryl Hall and Elvis Costello just played there um, on the 6th, okay? Daryl Hall starting out with Man Eater, playing Rich Girl, um, Sarah Smile, I Can't Go For That, You Make My Dreams. Um, seeing Elvis Costello and the Imposters um, in that setting, um, playing uh, Every Day I Write the Book, Clubland, watching The Detectives, that would have been really great. Um, what I think was pretty cool is I was looking through some of the set lists and maybe some of the what I missed at... Uh, some of that um 
just really, 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 really awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Um, hold on one second. To more greatness at the Ravinia is what I always say. You got to always wait on and see what else is coming there. But what I was saying before waiting on and going to more Ravinia is that uh, Roger Daltrey just played there of the who? Let my love open the door. He started with uh, Pete Townsend um, doing a little bit of a cover, which is crazy. Little feet and Los Lobos look like they play great sets. Um, Los Lobos play in, um, just, just a heck of a heck of a heck of a set. Um, Kiko and the Lavender Moon. You, you got to hear that. Mazi Mas. Uh, Will the Wolf Survive? Little Feet doing Spanish Moon. Um, that Rubinia, though, I, I got to, got to, got to get out there. Got to. Yeah, I was looking back at some of our shows, and you know who's one artist we barely have ever said anything about? That's the Beatle. I was looking through some of my records. This is Beatle 66. Um, just a really, really awesome album. No Reply, I'm a Loser. Baby in Black, Rock and Roll Music, Mr. Moonlight, Honey Don't. She's a she's a woman. Everybody's trying to be my baby. Gotta talk about some more Beatles around here. Maybe have a Beatles show. Um, it's cool, 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 cool to go and check out please check out all this awesome stuff that we've talked about in the weeks and 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 the weeks, and the weeks that we've been here. Check it all out. Okay. Go back and check out those Kings that we were talking about. Um, even if you're a little bit, uh, what's the word I'm saying? If you're not knowing what to listen to, um, I'm not kidding about that uh, beach bunny. That really, 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 really sounded good. Um, Honestly, B-52s just celebrated this week their debut. Um, amazing, amazing debut. If you, uh, We've talked about that quite a lot on here. Um, a lot of people say, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I could say you can listen to anything. Listen to, the, listen to Vance Joy. You know, he's not my top, but is it going to give you something different to listen to? Yeah. You know, listen to, uh, we've been talking about Sepultura a couple weeks ago. We've been talking about Slayer. We always talk about Slayer. Okay. Uh, you know, you're looking for someone uh, awesome? Listen to Frozen Soul. Very, very cool. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Heavy, 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 heavy band. Um, a lot of concerts coming up around, around the bend that uh, we hope to see you out and at and around and about, which is, well, isn't that what you want to be is out and about listening to tunes, listening to live tunes? If you got any shows that uh, maybe hasn't been on our radar or we haven't shared yet, Please do not be afraid to drop them down in the comments or uh, or just anywhere. Just don't be afraid. That's just really what we're saying here. Don't be afraid to talk about music. Um, the show just, uh, I would love uh, for you to join me. If you want to be a guest, please. The show isn't just about me. We've had over 40 guests on here. We're going to have a lot more. We already have some more scheduled down the week. Please come on. Um, love to talk about some of these guitarists, these blues guitarists, or any kind of kind of guitarist, bassist, drummer, keyboardist, um, all of that is just what uh, we love to do here. Please, 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 please uh, go and check out all the awesome stuff that is on the Sadistic Penguin Studios uh, YouTube channel. Um, awesome clips on martial arts, awesome clips on cool movies from the 80s, awesome uh, just clips all around um, at the show. We'll be back this Sunday. We will be talking about the amazing Willem Dafoe. Um, Awesome, awesome, uh, some soundtrack music in some of that. And I will be dropping my soundtrack pick of the week of a movie I just saw actually today. It blew my wig back on this movie. I know it took this long for me to see it, but I'm just so happy that I finally got to see it. And I'll be back with my man, main man, Yumper. Um, check out Friday night also is going to be uh, an awesome draft pod. Um, got the shirt on, always like wearing this shirt. Really feels good. Go down and check out some of our awesome awesome stuff that we are um got down there in the store just really really cool um love doing this stuff love sharing all this stuff with you guys um we just really appreciate it um let us know your favorite funk album in the comments below uh, please don't uh, be ashamed to do that um please don't be ashamed to ever tell us anything of what we're doing and how we can do it better we could love to share it with you so please 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 everybody out there um, I want you to have be safe. I want you to stay cool because it looks like it's going to get a little hot. So honestly, this is a good week if it's going to get hot to dig back into that Otis Rush. And uh, 
the gap band to make you smile. Um, but uh, until next time, everybody, my name is Tony, Tony B. And uh, I will be joining you again next week for some more awesomeness. Take care, everybody out there. <laughs>